to Adventure and Pumlet on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. I'm not holding your head. Watch me, watch me like you're trying to function. Living inside, I am the hole in your head. A constant reminder while you're all of my shit. I am the one that's getting under your skin. And you can try, but you will never be whole again. Watch me, watch me like you're trying to function. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio. And I'm here with our next guest who I can't... I, first of all, I really dig his new song but i dig the whole concept of his music so let's welcome to the show echo how are you what's up dude thanks for having me man appreciate you uh glad to be here what's going on oh my pleasure and the reason i said what i just did is because i i saw that basically your fans have labeled you as heart hop and i love that yeah me too especially because i don't think i'm uh savvy enough to have come up with that on my own so it's actually pretty cool uh, it is a really cool label if you're gonna have a label i mean i hate labels but if you're gonna have one that's the one to have yeah if there's anybody I'm, I'm pretty against all labeling um w- with everything so to have to to put a label on myself it would have to be something that really reigns true with me and that one absolutely does so i'm, I'm pretty lucky to have you know really dedicated and um just kind of close-knit fan base that really cares and really digs into to what i'm about and kind of connects with it in their own way and then take it and build their own communities and their own slang words and their own terminology and, and make their own stuff and it's it's really cool really just for me to be a part of what they're doing is really awesome and you know what else i love about it is okay so first of all it says a lot about your fans of what they think of you for them to come up with that and that they really from based on what i saw about you that that they really understand who you are as an artist, you know, like sometimes fans, they don't, they just like the music. They don't really get what the artist is all about, but it's like, it's almost like they get you. Yeah. I think that's kind of like, uh, I mean, that's the byproduct of if you're honest in your music and you write your own music and, and you put the time and effort into, you know, there's nobody with their hands on this other than me. And so everything that comes out is, you know, made by by me and and you know i have my hands in everything and so if you're watching it it is authentic you know yeah. and if, if you're authentic with everything that you're writing and, and you're being honest in your lyrics and, and you're really putting yourself out there people will relate and that's one thing i've kind of learned more about songwriting in general is i used to think to relate to a broad audience you need to speak in broad terms you know you need to you know brush in, in broad strokes but the one thing I've learned more and more, the, the, the more I do this, is that the more specific you are to your own story, somehow the more relatable you become to more people. Because it's not necessarily even about the details, it's about the feeling. Yeah. And because they can tell you're being real. Like, it's so easy, at least for me, to tell if an artist is just, you know, plugging in some formula or if they're just being real. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to kind of phone it in sometimes if you, if you want to. And in a world where, you know, not even not even trying to phone in, but there's a lot of people that don't, you know, write their own songs or write their own music or they're being influenced by, you know, a label or producers or whatever it may be. I've tried my best throughout my career to kind of cut out the noise and just listen to myself and only make what I want to make and only make what I like. And yeah. It's 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 a weird thing. I think it's more of a service to the fans to not try and make what they like. Mm-hmm. I've also found, you know, like when you try to please people, you're always there's always people you're not gonna please. Like you're never gonna please everybody. So you might as well please yourself and then your people will come. Yeah, and that that's a hundred percent, man. And you know, the success of if you find success in trying to please others, it's not even as gratifying. You know, it's no. not, it doesn't feel as good because in the back of your mind, you know, I did that 
I wasn't being 100% true. It's so much better if it's like, okay, this, I wrote exactly what I wanted to write, how I wanted to write it, and said what I wanted to say, and it connected. And that's a special feeling. I love that. You know what I also love about the label that you have, because I'm so anti-label, is that when your fans especially give you a label, that la that's, if you were to call it, quote unquote, a genre, it's your genre. It's not like being part of a genre. It's just being you. And like I go on tour and I do uh, coverage of music festivals. And one of the funniest things we do when I do interviews on site is I, I because I hate the genre labels and boxing artists in, I'm like, well, if you were to come up with your own genre that only your band was in, what would that genre be? Because that's the only way you you're really able to be an artist and express yourself opposed to, Oh my God, you know, like they're not playing something that I'm used to hearing. Like you should be able to play whatever you want, you know? Yeah. So that, that's a question you actually ask people. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I love I love it's so, so cool. fun too. Cause, cause like, you know, nowadays there's so many sub genres, micro genres that it, it's kind of getting ridiculous. And, I find that a lot of artists, they have to go by this like formula. I call it an algebraic equation to make their music because God forbid they should just stray a little bit off the road. People are like, oh, oh sell out poser, blah, 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 or whatever they want to say. And, and all the gatekeepers come out and say shit. And to me, like being an artist means experimenting and doing what makes you feel good, no matter where you go with your music. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I couldn't agree more, man. I think a lot of that comes down to labels, you mm -hmm. know, pushing people. It's, it's easier to sell something that is just this one thing. It's like, if you know what this is, it's in this box, we can sell this. Yeah. And that's always been my issue with labels is being like, well, what are you? I'm like, I'm just me, man. You know, if I want to make... Uh, uh, a rap song, you know, because that's how I'm feeling that day, and that's how I feel I can best express the message I'm trying to get out is through this medium. I'm gonna do that. If if I'm feeling like, yo, let's, I, I'm, I want to make some heavy shit. Let's let's go hard on, you know, make a song like "Hole in Your Head" or "Hurt Myself" or something like that. I'm like, yeah. that's how I can get out what I want there. And then it's like, okay, well, we want you to do more of this. And my head's always like, I can only make what what I can make. If that makes it. Oh yeah. That makes know. total sense. And I think that's where artists today, I think in some ways are a lot luckier. Everybody talks about the negativity of things like Spotify and TikTok and all that and not having the record labels. But as somebody that was very involved in the music scene on the sunset strip in the eighties and seeing what these record labels did to these bands, it's like, thank God artists like you can just make their own music because that's what destroyed genres and destroyed bands was the record labels doing that. Yeah, it becomes commercialized. And it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, investors and it's all these people that aren't creatives, you know, judging right? the, the trajectory of an artistic medium. It's like, how can you... How are we letting this happen? When did the power come out of the hands of the artists and the creators and go into the hands of just the people making decisions with money that should not be making these decisions? It is a detriment no. to the genre, to the medium, to the art for these people making these decisions. And it's not everybody. There are people with labels that know what they're doing and yeah. have an artistic vision, but it's hard to have that for 20 artists under your belt anyways. And, yeah. you know, it... it now that's why you see the resurgence of all these random genres that we thought were dead or weren't cool anymore. It's like, no, they were always cool. It's just, we only saw what labels were pushing to radio. Yep. And so we are a slave to whatever gets put in front of our faces. And now when it's like, Oh, you can like whatever you want again. Yeah. Now so people cool. are like, Oh shit. I have control to like what I like. I don't have to like only what's put in front of me. Let's go. That's one thing I love about Europe when I go over to Europe to cover festivals there is because that's exactly what happened. There were bands that I thought 
were gone and dead for like 10, 20 years. I'm like, oh my God, they were just in Europe all this time. <laughs> Dude, you'll see that a lot with like, uh, especially like underground hip hop acts like that I grew right. up listening to. There was like, this was like the punk rock of hip hop back in the day where it was like, you know, Jedi Mind Tricks and R.A. the Rugged Man and uh, artists like, you know, Styles and Beyond, artists like this that don't even tour the U.S., but they go over to Europe and absolutely crush. Right. And you're like, yes, okay. I'm, I'm glad there's an audience. I knew it was somewhere. And it's like, this is where it's at. Like, I should live here. Right. It, you know, it even holds true for people like me and press that are doing coverage at all these music festivals and shows because I do them all over the U.S. I do them in the U.K. I do them in Europe and Europe and U.K. They still treat press as if they're actually press. Whereas here, it's like they're trying to eliminate all the in, individual press so that they can control the narrative just like everything else. Yeah, I mean, that it's unfortunate. You know, I played Finland, I think, was that last year? We did a festival out in Finland. And yeah, it just felt like going back in time a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know, the vibe is, is so cool. And, and the fans are so appreciative. And Not that they're not in the U.S., but it's just a very different energy. Yeah. You know? It's also a different feeling when, you know, English isn't somebody's first language and they're, and they're singing all your words. And you're like, I know, right? Wild. Yeah. I, I always think, man, that must feel so good as an artist. These people can't even, you know, have a conversation with somebody in English, let's say. But yet they're singing every lyric of your song and they know what it means. Yeah, that's that's one of probably one of the most like culture shock and also just like, whoa, moments right? is going that far away. Just knowing that your music can get that far. And I mean, that's, you know, more of a testament to, you know, the Spotify's and the TikToks that, you know, a lot of people do have negative things to say about it. It's like, well, how, how are you going to do that before? before this because that that puts the hand the power back in the hands of the artists so where we can make something like that happen on our own and that's incredible yeah totally so the new single mayday i love the concept of that because i can i can relate to it too so maybe you could tell the listeners your story behind that song oh man i mean mayday is a song for me that's been kind of years in the in the making i it's a song about being unable to open up and be vulnerable a lot of my problems i've noticed in in personal relationships or in you know romantic relationships tend to be my inability to to open up and be vulnerable and to really let somebody in and tell somebody what's really going on with me and be authentic and let you see the the parts of me that that I, I'm afraid that you're gonna judge mm. and and tell you the thoughts that I have that that might feel stupid and and you know if I'm insecure or not feeling confident or all these kind of, or I'm scared or things like this or all these things that I hold in and instead of talking about it, you know, and especially if you're in a romantic relationship, your partner probably knows. Right. You know, they can sense it. And will ask, you know, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. I just want you to open up. I want you to open up. And instead, just pushing it down and pushing it down. And there's always the moment when everything comes to the surface, um, whether it's, you know, self-destructing in a way with like substances or or just making stupid decisions or, or doing things that are a detriment to yourself. And by the time it comes out, whether it's a, a lie that gets found out or, you know, hurting somebody by that point, it's too late to open up. But also by that time, it's the easiest to open up because everything's already out in the open. And when yeah. everybody, when somebody finally knows everything, it's so much easier to open up. And I've noticed why am I closest to my relationships right after one of those moments? Right. That's, you know, that's a good, uh, that's some good enlightenment right there. Cause some people, they don't, they don't even think of that part of it. Yeah, I think it was like, why do I feel closest with the people I'm with right after chaos? Right, right after something terrible happened. And it's really because then everything's out in the open. I can be vulnerable. It's like you now see all of me and you accepted it. So I feel safe. And now I can talk about these things. But instead, but and then I'll, and then the cycle happens again. And yeah. it's like, you know, Mayday, the fucking ship's going down. 
and now I'm finally ready to open up, you know, but it has to, it has to come crashing down first. That's why I totally relate to this song too, because, you know, growing up for me, you know, guys aren't supposed to do that and express their feelings and just deal with it. You know? And the thing is, I always talk about, it's funny you say romantic relationships, because now at this stage of life, I'm like, I need to find the person who knows the me inside my head because nobody in the world knows that person, mm-hmm. you know, and especially when you're an artist like you or, you know, in the public eye, they, people think they know you, <laughs> but they don't, you know, yeah. and you almost, it's like, you're always living in a facade, you know, because yes, part of you is out there and that is part of you. But then there's another part of you that nobody ever gets to experience or see because, like you said, you're hiding from judgment. You're, you know, society dictates, oh, blah, 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 you know. And I think it's great that you made a song like this so people can see the message, get the message, and maybe future people can change and not have to bury that. Because nothing good happens from burying that crap. No, not at all, man. And I, I I agree with the, you know, can I find someone that I can let really know the person that's, that's up here because I feel, you know, you're like, if I told you everything I was thinking, you, you be like, what the fuck are you? Okay. You know, (laughs) totally. but to be able to find someone that's like, yeah, I, that I can be completely authentic with that you can let see all of you is a very, it's a very risky endeavor to, to kind of make, you know, it's not easy to, you know, let somebody know all these parts and be open. And it's just so uncomfortable, you know, and especially yeah. you're right, you know, being, being raised, you know, uh, with the, with toxic masculinity and, and all these things of, of not opening up or, you know, not, being sensitive or whatever it may be that there's there's things that are ingrained in us that you can't do this or can't do that. And man, I remember I was watching that was that movie iron claw, you know, and this like horrible, horrible series of events that happens to this family. I'm just like, this is just toxic masculinity on a mass scale of like all these guys that were unable to open up and just say what's going on. And, uh, you know, you push it down for long enough and it's, you're right. There's nothing, everything you, you bury deep down will eventually grow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it never grows into anything good. No, I kind of like relate to, uh, did you ever see the series Dexter? Yes. Okay. So I kind of relate it to Dexter because he had four relationships in that series. The first one He could only be good Dexter because that woman would never understand his dark passenger. So he always had to hide that dark passenger. And then the second woman, he could never be good Dexter because she wanted only the bad boy. Mm -hmm. So God forbid anything he did would be good. She wouldn't like that. Third one was temporary because of a situation. But Hannah McKay was the key because Dexter could be everything he was with her and there was no judgment and he could finally be a hundred percent himself. And then he lost the urge to kill people because he could be a hundred percent himself. And I think that says it all. Yeah. It's a huge, it's a huge thing. And that is like, uh, you know, the idea that I am not every piece of me. I am all the pieces, mm-hmm. you know, exactly. cause there, there is, you know, I do have, especially when you, when, Man, I hate saying like when you're in this business, it feels very like pretentious. But, you know, there is a piece of this that is very put out for the world. Social media, you know, put on a face, sell your stuff. You know, it it just it becomes that because you want people to see the art that you've made. And there is a certain way to get your art to people the way that they'll be able to see it with algorithms and, and stuff like that. So there is a piece of that game you do have to play and a face you do have to put on to get the art that you care about to people so that they can see it, you know? So there is a piece that you have to put on 
for that. And then there's a piece you have to put on when you're around, you know, uh, if you're playing live shows and then there's the piece when you're just at home with your dogs and you have to go pick up dog shit in the backyard and be a normal <laughs> human being. There's all these different pieces and, you know, having one bad day or having a good day, neither of these is my full identity. It's a encapsulation of it all. And it's hard Absolutely. to remember that there is, that is the whole person is all of it instead of just the little moments. Totally. Now, I also want to talk about the special show you did on the 9th of February because mm. there were two things I thought were really cool about that. Considering I have, like, I think 30 pairs of Vans. Nice. I, I was totally like, well, that's really cool. Vans will be on site, giving away free sh swag, and, and then you could get in by just wearing Vans. <laughs> like, that'd be perfect. Yeah. I could get in everywhere. And then, more importantly donating to music cares because what a great great thing for helping what a great charity organization and you know i think it's something that's so seriously needed now more than ever because there's so much mental illness in the uh, music industry now and there's so much help that's needed so I think not only is the organization way cool, but it's way cool that d you did a show that donated money to that organization. Yeah. I mean, that whole thing ended up being on, you know, on every side of it was so fulfilling and just so cool to see and very just, it was very moving just to see the whole thing because we've been doing this thing with, you know, signing vans. I've been doing that for maybe three years now and we've signed thousands of pairs of vans and it's a, it's a big part of the community that, you know, my fans have built is, is wearing vans to shows and getting them signed, you know, while I'm performing and, and making their own and bringing them to shows and meet and greets and stuff like that. So it's always been such a huge piece and we've always tried to get vans attention every, maybe I would say like every quarter we would make, a video of all the highlights of us signing and we tag vans and it was always just like a well just throw another one out and nothing's gonna happen we they never reached out and i was just like just kind of you know resigned to the fact that it's not gonna happen but we're not gonna stop doing what we do and so the fact that they you know reached out and took some interest and asked and were curious about what we we're doing and at that point we just kind of hail married it and we're like okay well let's do a free show if you're wearing vans let's you know make this something cool for the fans because at the end of the day for us, it really comes down to, you know, how can we make this a cool fan experience? Yeah. And, and, and make something, you know, unique for people to be a part of. And once, you know, we're like, okay, we can make it free, but what do we do for people who aren't wearing vans? And I've always been a big, you know, warp tour. And so I know what Kevin Lyman does. And I, I've known about music cares for a long time, especially during the pandemic yeah. and music cares is doing. And I think it's incredibly important. And like you said, I think it's very important now, not only because, of the amount of you know how mental illness is actually being you know uh, a light shed on it but there's more artists now than there ever have been i think mm -hmm. and I, that that's a part of you know social media and being able to do it independently so there's so many more artists now there is so much more pressure as an artist because there are so many more artists and the output you have to have is so much greater and with social media being a piece of that, there's even more pressure and there's even more nuance to, to the problems that you can face as an artist and the mental gymnastics that you have to learn how to do and the pressure and all this kind of stuff. And none of us have health insurance. Right. So because you're chasing a dream and you want to do this kind of stuff. And, and, and I mean, most, a lot of people don't have health insurance and have regular jobs. So, how important it is to support an organization like that to me is, is a no brainer. So the fact that we were able to support that organization and Vans ends up coming out and a lot of the fans that came out to the show, you know, a lot of my fan base don't have, you know, I mean, and it's not even just my fan base. A lot of people are struggling right now with yeah. financially, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, concert tickets are not cheap buying merch isn't cheap, getting a babysitter, getting gas, parking, all the kind of stuff that goes into a night of going to a show. 
is not cheap. And so a lot of the people that came out to that show weren't even, wouldn't have been able to come to a show if it wasn't free. And so the fact that they were able to come to a show and Vans also goes, hey, we see you and we see what you're doing and we support you too. It's, it's, it was like a group of people that were told like, you're important. I love it. And to me, that's the most important thing as a fan or as a human being told like, hey, you're important. Don't forget that. Just because you can't afford tickets to a show doesn't mean you don't deserve to go to a show. Doesn't mean you're not important. Doesn't mean you shouldn't have cool shit. Like, we're going to show you that you are important and we're going to give you a good time on us. And that was a cool thing. And the fact that Vans showed up and then Vans picked up the check for Music Cares. They're like, we're going to pick up the check and pay for it. So everybody got in the show free. And if you didn't have a wow. pair of Vans, Vans put up the money for music. It was just such a cool thing all around. And it was by far one of the most fun, fulfilling experiences I've had playing a live show ever. It was just really, really fun. Oh, I so love hearing that. It's so amazing. Because I even think nowadays, I'm like, I don't even know how teenagers <laughs> go to shows. I went to shows like almost every day of the week. But it was like $2 for a ticket, $5 if I wanted a t-shirt, <laughs> you know? And you could scrape the change together to go to a show. I don't even know how teenagers do it nowadays, to be honest. Neither do I, man. It's, it's definitely different now than I used to go to free shows in parking lots, and those were the best. I can't, right? remember, I can't remember the last, you know, where, what free show has happened. You know? Or yeah, tickets just used to be 20 bucks if it was like a, a, a really big bill. You know, $20, $25. Now tickets are $45, $75, $100. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, totally. So let's tell everybody how they can reach out to you on the web, uh, connect you on socials, <laughs> check out your uh, new single, Mayday, plus all your other music and everything you got going on. Yeah, you can find me on all social platforms. It's all at Echo Music. It's E-K-O-H Music everywhere. Echo on all music platforms, YouTube, wherever, wherever you listen to music, you can find me. Nice. Any final words you want to leave our listeners with? Oh man. I don't, that's, that's, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I mean, thank you, man. I just, thanks for, for tuning in and listening. Uh, I appreciate anybody who, you know, is uh, open-minded and willing to give our music a shot and, and listen to something. Maybe if it doesn't, it might not necessarily feel like it's in the genre that, that you normally play around in or listen to music in. I hope that you can, um, relate to the substance, you know, sometimes even more than the genre. Cause that's, yeah. that's kind of what we're all about. I think it's so important. And me, even myself, like I'm a metal head and a punk and I dig your music. So genre Thanks, doesn't mean crap. Okay. It's I mean, I grew up on metal punk and hip hop, like underground hip hop, which when I was growing up was like punk rock. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I moved from punk rock straight into underground hip hop and was like, this is fuck the system. We're doing it on our own DIY. Like we'll say what we want, go against the grain, like say it how it is. I was like, this is where it's at. It's so, the attitude. It's the it attitude. Is, man. Uh, it really is. I, I do believe that. So I appreciate uh, that compliment, man. Thank you. Anytime. And uh, thanks for giving us such great music and a great message. And thanks for being on the adventures of pipe, man. Anytime, dude. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.